Thank you so very much for your time. We're so glad to have you here in Seoul and with us for this interview. Well, it's always a pleasure to visit Seoul. Mm -hmm. There's so much things to do. Right, and you're saying that second time in like a month that you're here, so it's like nothing for you. You're very familiar with everything. Uh, yes, I think we always enjoy visiting here. Uh huh. We have so many things to do, good food, right. good shopping, <laughs> good friends around here. Uh huh. Well, uh, we're very glad that you, uh, we were able to uh, meet with you and talk about a lot of various things regarding, of course, the IOC. But you yourself, first vice president of the IOC, and uh, not to mention you've been watching the sports industry for quite some time. What kind of progress have you seen in international sports throughout your tenure? Well, I was elected to be a member in 1998 in Nagano mm -hmm. during the Winter Games there. Uh, and I have been fortunate to serve under the presidency of both uh, the late President Samaranj and uh, President Jock Rock. Uh, the Games itself, uh, from version to version, has always been very exciting. Mm -hmm. Be it the Winter Games or Summer Games, Nagano, Salt Lake City, uh, uh, Torino uh, for the Winters, for example, and Sydney, uh, Athens, Beijing, and now the uh, just recently completed London, London Games mm -hmm. as well. You know. And every game is it bring up its own uh, uniqueness, combining sports with the culture and tradition of the country, and the excellent performance of the athletes, breaking records, so many human stories uh, of uh, interest to, to tell and so many triumphs and uh, tribulations mm -hmm. and the, the triumph of uh, sportsmen over all adversity. Right. And these are all very exciting and very interesting. And that's why it makes such a big story mm -hmm. every time when you have come to a Games. Well, it, when it comes to Olympics, Summer Olympics, Winter Olympics, but on top of that, there are a lot of other, um, you know, for example, the Summer Youth Olympics. The first one took place 2010 in Singapore, right? And uh, you actually played a big role in that as well. Could you tell us about the background story of how that came to be? In 2007, mm -hmm. uh, President Rock uh, promoted the idea that we should uh, be looking at the games for the youth. Uh, games that is going to be very unique, that combines uh, both sports, education and culture. And games where the athletes, the young athletes between the age of 14 to 18, will stay throughout the games of 12 days. They will take part in all the Olympic sports. But equally importantly, there's going to be a platform for them to interact amongst themselves in terms of culture and education. And the games also call for uh, no building or new facilities, uh, uh, making use of whatever that is existing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a game that uh, cities other than those who can host the big Olympic Games can host. And the, this idea was unanimously approved at the session in Guatemala in 2007. And Singapore was very fortunate to bid and right. won the, to first host one. the Yes, the very first one, <laughs> the inaugural Games. I was chairing the uh, organizing committee. That's right. And our idea was to have a games for the youth, uh, by the youth. Mm. And so we have a host of young people involved. And they created the energy, the vibrancy, and the uniqueness of the games uh, that took place in Singapore. And we're all very, very proud of it. Mm. And the result has been wonderful. It's such a great, it's essentially, of course, while it's going on, it's an exciting event, but also it's an investment for the future of sports as well. Um, what kind of growth do you see for the Summer Youth Olympics? What kind of expectations do you have for it? Well, Nanjing is going to be host, hosting the second Games mm -hmm. in 2014, and there are five cities bidding to host the 2018 Games. Uh, I, th I believe the legacy will continue. It will continue to develop its uniqueness. And together with that, uh, Innsbruck hosted the uh, first Youth Winter Games. And the Winter Games is different from the Summer Games. Right. But I, it was just as successful. The passion of the youth, uh, the excitement of sports competition, the excitement of the young people coming together to discuss uh, issues that are of concern to them. For example, their future career development, their career in sports, interacting with uh, existing uh, Olympic champions. Heroes, right? Heroes and role models. Uh, learning about uh, the fight against doping, uh, prevention of AIDS, HIV, and 
hopefully they will become better citizens of tomorrow and contribute back to society. Mm -hmm. So these are all the development that's going on. So I believe that the version of the youth games will grow from strength to strength, from version to version. Mm -hmm. You are quite a busy man though, I mean not just the organizing committee for that, you're also the chairman of the Olympic Council of Asia, the advisory committee. Now, what would you say, we are starting to see Asian countries become a bigger player in terms of international sports, but what would you say is like an ideal way to further the advancement of sports in Asia? The OCA, the Olympic Council of Asia Advisory Committee was set up uh, with the support of the president of OCA, Sheikh Ahmad. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that there was uh, a need to better coordinate uh, the role of the IOC members in Asia with that of the NOC uh, in Asia. Right. And we created this committee that has 10 members on board, or IOC members in Asia, and we draw on the resources of other members to support the development of the uh, Olympic movement in Asia. And that's been working on very well. There's great coordination now mm -hmm. and to support the uh, OC itself as well as the NOC. Uh, with uh, a population of uh, 4 billion and about 60% of the world's population. Exactly. <laughs> and been uh, one of the uh, biggest economies in the world. And, and growing Combined and growing mm -hmm. and uh, with the current crisis, Asia is still holding its own. Uh, so I believe that in sport, there's a lot of development that can be done in tandem with the economic growth, with the size of the population. Uh, the and Asian Games itself is growing from strength to strength uh, mm -hmm. and the financial strength of the Games is good, coverage is good, a lot of interest, a lot of uh, uh, sponsorship. More cities bidding More well. cities bidding. The standard of the Games and of the sports is getting higher and from there uh, many of the Asian champions go on to, became, to become Olympic champions. So I see there's a good trend and good development in Asia. Mm -hmm. And I mean, look at Korea. <laughs> a wonderful performance in the London Games. I mm. uh, was just talking to the sports minister this morning and he was so happy with the, the, the results. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was more than they expect, expected. Mm. So not just in Asia then, um, some of the great points you mentioned, uh, the development we're seeing in Asia, but in general, what kind of role would you say these uh, National Olympic Committees need to play? We have 204 Olympic Committees around the world. Well, you have to cover the entire world. So yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and each one of them has a very important to, role to play in promoting the Olympic movement, the Olympic values, in promoting sports, in their respective uh, country or territory. Uh, they are formed under the Olympic Charter and every one of them uh, has been working exceptionally hard and you can see the results at the Olympic Games that every NOC has taken part in the Games. Uh, in addition, I think they have the, the role to help to educate the, the young athletes as well and helping to spread uh, gender equalities around, mm -hmm. not just in terms of uh, opportunity to take part in sports, but the leadership as well. So we see a lot of uh, uh, female uh, women that have taken on leadership position in different areas of uh, the Olympic movement, whether it's in national Olympic committees, in international federations, or just in their own uh, national federations. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to hosting, I mean, you were also chairman of various commissions for the most recent 2012 London Olympics. Now, hosting and running these sporting events, now, what are some points that you would say needs to be improved? Well, the bids for to host a Games is always very competitive. It's like uh, the Olympic Games itself, mm -hmm. and it's always a fight to the, the final. Right, and it takes several tries even for many countries, yes, right? Yes, uh, the, the, a very good example of Pyeongchang yeah. will try three times. Third time's a charm. <laughs> and they succeeded in, uh, on the third try. Uh, so there was a lot of effort, the coordination of the NOCs, the various stakeholders involved in the bid, the government, the athletes, and everyone working together to make the bid successful. And if you fail, 
you go back to the drawing board, relook at it mm -hmm. again, and try again. So we've been involved uh, in the evaluation commission as well as coordination commission for both London and Beijing. Mm. It gave me a lot of insight into the working of not just the bid bidding process itself, but after, but afterwards the preparation, seven years of hard work, and ending up in the uh, whether it's 16 days for the summer games mm. or, the, or the winter games itself. Uh, so all the work in seven years has just been manifested during the games itself. Yeah. Uh, and it's, uh, it's always been a wonderful result. And the result itself show uh, through the games on the hard work that has been put in. Even the bidding process represents a lot of the spirit of the Olympics. Now, to say the least, if you look at the international situation, a lot of testy, turbulent state of foreign affairs going on, right? Um, now, how would you, I think more than now, we, more than ever, we need the Olympic spirit, but how would you interpret the Olympic spirit? Well, I think uh, under the current uh, economic and political situations around the world, uh, things are not rosy. Many young people are suffering as a result of this. Uh, I believe that the uh, Olympic movement has a lot to uh, do, do to help to lift the spirit of the young people especially, mm -hmm. uh, giving them the hope, the inspiration to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe this is what uh, the IOC has been doing through the different work in the in international relations and development as well, working together with the different agencies of the United Nations uh, in as well as government, NGOs, our own Olympic family members, the NOCs, the IFs. Uh, and I believe that through all these different efforts, uh, we will continue to support and inspire the youth of the world. And wouldn't you say that, or would you say that we could even take away lessons on global leadership from the Olympics? Because like you said, it goes more than just which country scored how many points and you know things like that in just the sporting aspect. So global leadership wise, what would you say we can take away? What I think the, as far as the, the games is concerned, which is always the, the big showcase of the Olympic movement, uh, the triumph of the athletes, the, the work, the sacrifices that they have made to overcome all adversity, to come up on top, mm -hmm. Or for those who are just taking part, who, who have been enjoying themselves, I think this, these are ma there are many good uh, lessons and story to, to learn from. And I believe the, the global leadership uh, to overcome this current crisis around the world, uh, the perseverance, uh, the willingness to do all it has to do, and the never say die spirit uh, are part of the the, the quality that will help us through this very difficult time. Right. With all your experience then, especially as the first vice uh, president of the IOC, not just people who want to be athletes, but what kind of advice would you give for young people who want to play a more active role in increasing cooperation in terms of international sports? I think through sports, uh, you have many opportunities to uh, make friends around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, through sports, uh, you have a better understanding of what's happening around you as well. So for young people, I think is to, my advice is to take part in sport, have an active life, uh -huh. and volunteer to help with uh, organization of sports in different capacity. Mm. And I think uh, one always will be able to progress uh, through life, not just in uh, education, in career, but I think in this case, in volunteering as well. Uh, and who knows, maybe to involve with the National Federation and later on to be involved with the National Olympic Committee. Steps, right? <laughs> and one step at a time and some days at the international level, you know, with the International Federation. And maybe, who knows again, uh -huh. uh, maybe one day with the International Olympic Committee. There's 15 members on the executive board, not to mention four vice presidents, right? Now you <laughs> are the top contender for the presidency of the IOC next year as well. Do you even intend to uh, go about the presidency, to run for it, to become a candidate? Well, I think it's a privilege and honor to have been serving as IOC member and uh, even a greater privilege and honor to be mentioned as a potential 
a candidate, mm -hmm. uh, but I do not believe that I'm the co top contender. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, we're definitely with less than a year to go uh, with uh, President Rock's uh, presidency, uh, there's been a lot of discussion on what the future of IOC would be. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of discussion on the le uh, leadership succession as well. And as, as a member, I'm part of this process of uh, discussing, of dialogue, and uh, looking at the crystal ball on what the future is going to be like. So it's a challenging time for us as well. Okay. A very important one at that. Very diplomatically put. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's say um, if we look into that crystal ball, and if you were to become the uh, president, um, that represents a lot for Asia as well. You'd be the first Asian president. So we'll have to see. Well, only the future can tell us, right? But um, as a leader in international sports, what are some future goals or plans that you personally have? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, there have been a lot of discussion of whether uh, someone out of Europe uh, to be president uh, would be the preferred choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose to have uh, somebody from a different continent would bring a different perspective. But then as the president of the, of the IOC, it is not just about a continent, but right. it's about the, the whole world. world. Mm -hmm. So I think that the membership definitely will be looking at the leader who can lead IOC on an uh, international and a global basis. And I believe the work of the IOC will continue. Uh, President Rock has been pushing for zero tolerance in ethics, in anti-doping. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is part of the work that has to continue. Uh, the engaging the youth, bringing up to the, the next level, giving continue to give inspiration to the youth of the world. Uh, fighting for gender equality, fighting for sustainable development. And at the same time, I think there's a new threat that's facing uh, sports now, one of Ill Ill illegal and irregular betting, mm. uh, which uh, the, the work has started in earnest two years ago by President Rock. I think that's another part that has to continue. So there's a plenty of work for the IOC to do. Uh, we had the Olympic Congress in Copenhagen in 2009. I was fortunate to be part of the uh, editorial committee. We received more than 2,000 recommendations from around the world, uh, giving uh, a lot of feedback on what the future should be. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of things to do yet uh, from all this. And I, I believe, you know, the, the next uh, pres president will have plenty uh, to do on his hand as well. A lot on his plate, or his or her plate. <laughs> yes, absolutely so. Well, just listening to your responses, I definitely sense uh, your passion, not only for the Olympics, but for the youth, for the future as well. And um, all your answers seem to be indicating to us that there is a lot of growth for the Olympics on the horizon. Thank you so very much for your uh, uh, input and insight on this matter today. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. 